welcome again to Watercolours with Caroline. This week we will be painting a blue poppy and with thanks to Leslie Charlesworth for the photo, she uploads her photos to the Facebook group uh, Free Reference Photos for Artists. So I am very grateful to those photographers that put those beautiful photos there because it's a great resource. We're going to be using a lot of cerulean blue and cobalt blue and ultramarine blue for these blue poppies. So get your paints ready, a little bit bigger paper today. I'm working on seven inch by nine inch paper and let's get painting those poppies. So I've got my drawing done. And the first color that we always use is the yellows because they are the um, lightest color and the most difficult one to keep nice and clean. So what we want to uh, do first is these, um, I think they're the pistils of the flower. And uh, we want to have those first in a lemon yellow. And while we have the lemon on, we can add a little bit of uh, either cadmium yellow or gamboge. Now this darker, i zoom in a little bit. This darker part I put on later, like after after the yellow was dry, I put on a sort of a orangey red later on. So that doesn't go on until the first layer is dry. Now have a look. There's a little bit of rose in here and a little bit of yellowy green here. So those are worked wet in wet. And if you look at the photograph, you can see a little bit of pink in here and less than I've put here, but I put a bit more sort of yellowy green for drama. So that's that's one of the things we're aiming for um, when we do the wet in wet. So easy to start with, really, because we're going to directly get lemon yellow and a small brush, um, either a, a two or a four. I have a four in my hand because my two's you know go and walk about like my brushes always do <laughs> That's okay. if they have a nice fine point you'll be okay i get my lemon yellow so lemon is about the lightest yellow you can get and i want to start very very light with those pistils coming out And like I said, very, very direct painting. And at the end, they are a little bit darker. And like I said, I put one layer on later, but I have gamboge as well. You could, you could use cadmium or you could use, if you don't have gamboge, you could mix a tiny bit of uh, rose with cadmium. And I'm just going to add right at the tip, right at the tip there, I'm going to add a little bit more of a warm yellow. Now that's a gamboge at the tip, which is a, a very warm orangey yellow. So we've got three of those to do on dry paper. And the nice thing is when you work on dry paper with fairly dry paint, you can go on and work on other things fairly quickly. So again, lemon yellow. And a little bit of the gamboge at the tip. And my gamboge has not got much water in, so it's not going to spread too much. And the last one here. A little bit of gamboge. Now towards the center of the flower, these pistols go kind of green. So I'm going to take a little bit of sap green. You can take, you can make a green with a little bit of blue. And while this, this um, lemon yellow is still wet with a very, very light touch right in the centers, I'm going to add a little bit of sap green now you can if you don't have sap green you can mix uh cadmium yellow or azo yellow with a little bit of cobalt blue or ultramarine blue you can make 
you know, or you can use a hooker screen, just a nice light green as they go towards the center. Now you don't want that green to flood into your lemon. So be very, very gentle with how much, how much you add. That way you won't get a whole bunch of bleeding of color. Now, while the, you, you can, you know, let that soak in and while that's soaking in, I'm going to do a little bit of work on this one over here. That's not this little bud. It's not touching anything. I have these colors on my palette and I can, this side of the bud is a lemony yellow. So I got my lemon. And I can put a little bit on the top of this one. And I have a little bit of my green, sap green or a, a green that you've made. And I'm going to start by putting that on the darker side, the shadowy side. Very carefully and a little bit, a little bit on here. And the stem. Now, the only reason for doing this part right now is to allow the pistols to dry. They have time to dry so we can move on. And because we have these colors on our palette at the moment, so might as well use them on a little piece that's separate from everything else and could use a little bit of work at the beginning. I'm, I'm watching you work and just waiting for you. Don't want to go too fast. Have a sip of my coffee while you're painting. The nice thing is this is all worked on dry paper and there's very little need to rush, unlike with the sort of wet in wet and and everything, you can really take your time. Right. Now, I, I started with the, the biggest poppy, so I know that that one will be drying the fastest. And before I do anything, I want to have mixed up some permanent rows or whatever like rows you have. You know, you might have just a rose door or um, some other kind of rose, but that's just for the middle of this uh, poppy. And you have a little bit of yellow and green, which we're going to use just on the edge of one of the petals. So you need that ready. And you need a nice, nice big puddle of cerulean blue. So I'm going to get my big brush because mixing a big puddle, you need a big brush for that. And I always put water on first. I usually scoop about three brushfuls of water into my palette first, and then add some paint. And I make sure it's a lovely big, big puddle. Hmm. So I'm getting that ready. I've got my yellows and greens over here that will be useful. So I just leave them there. So I've done a way better job cleaning that other piece there. So I need a little bit more space. Just clean another section of my palette. The reason I got another little section clean is I want a little bit of cobalt ready for some shadows. And a little bit of ultramarine. So that we have cerulean blue for the main part, cobalt for the, the delicate shadows, and then ultramarine for the 
the darker shadows on the petals. I was getting my ultramarine here. My brush is clean. Oh, I found my number two brush that my walker bells. There it is. It turned up. Right, so I have all of those ready. And because I'm working on a fairly big petal, I want a fairly big brush. I think my number eight for this one is a good choice. I'm going to wet the brush to get it so it will load the paint well. And I'm going to start with this big petal up here. And I haven't put masking fluid on any of the um, stamens because that would be a huge amount of work. The masking fluid probably wouldn't make that beautiful shape. And I'm going to try and leave some white speckles and also when we use, when we color the, the ends, the pollen on the ends, we're gonna use quite a dark burnt sienna mixed with a bit of red and a bit of yellow mixed with red so that they're a sort of much darker color. So we're, we're gonna be careful with those and see if we can leave them really, really light. So the first petal I'm going to do just with cerulean blue. And I want to make sure that my brush is wet. My paint is not too, strong because I want to have that transparent look to those petals. So when I want to try to get that look, I can start with paint on my brush and I can then add water. I can just dip into a bit of water and oh, spread, yes. spread that out. Now, as I get close, let's zoom in even more. As I get close to these little stamens, I'm going to pick up my brush so I've got just the point, and I'm delicately going to just go around them, not really, really precisely, but just so that some of them stay dry. And as I'm coming around to this side, I have almost just water on the tip of my brush. And I'm filling that part in just with the water. And I can take a little bit of the cobalt blue mix. And while this is all wet, I can just put a little bit in the center and sort of flick it out. And then I can, I'm wiping my brush dry so it's damp, but, but dry. And I'm just gonna control those, just sweeping them out a little bit into the cerulean blue. Now it doesn't matter if your blue is too light at this stage. You can put more shadows on, transparent shadow layers afterwards. It's better to be too light than too thick. And we're just doing that petal to start with. And I just remembered that I forgot to make my puddle of rose. So while you're doing that, I'm going to make my puddle of rose. Okay, I really like that my cerulean on one corner is doing a little bit of granulation, which is looking quite pretty. So for the, the left and the right petals, they have that little bit of white and rose right at the center of the flower. So I want to put a little bit of water on first so it's not going to get too dark because it's almost white in the photo. And I've got my number four brush, or you could use a smaller, and I'm going to get a little bit of that diluted rose. And before I put any blue on, I'm just going to put a little bit of that rose coming out from the, the center. It's so subtle that I almost didn't see it when I first looked at the photograph. When I took a second look at the photograph, that's when I noticed this very light center and the little bit of rose, which looks so pretty with cerulean blue. 
Now, right here, I have still have wet paint and I can drop a little bit of that rose into that wet paint for that lovely wet in wet look as well. If you're in any doubt about your dilutions, have a bit of scrap paper and try out your dilutions on the scrap paper to see if your paint is diluted enough. And if, it's, if you put it on your painting and it's not, quickly add water before it starts to dry too much. So I'm going to go in with, um, I've still got my number four brush. I think I'll stick with that for the closer brush strokes. And we want to bring our brush strokes out in the direction of the folds or the veins in the petal because you can actually see sort of white white lines and I'm again just loosely trying to go around those little stamens and it's perfectly okay to have those white lines skipped there's also a folded petal here I can put that in I'm going to put that little darker later with a second layer. Now I'm going to switch to my um, number six brush, or you can do a number eight, just a bigger, slightly bigger brush, because I want to sweep out in bigger brush strokes. Always coming outwards with your brush strokes in the direction of the lines on the petal. Start with the tip of your brush and then push all your brush down so that you get the belly of the brush onto the paper and all of the paint squeezes out. And then, of course, as you get closer to the edge of the petal, you lift your brush up again and just use the point. So I, when I want lots of paint to come out, I push the brush down and that squeezes all the paint out in a big big brush stroke and then lift up and use the point to get a lovely controlled edge. And I've left a little bit of a uh, white streak for the veins in the leaf. While this is wet, I'm going to take a little bit of my cobalt blue, just a little bit, and I'm going to add, it's not got much water added to it. So the cerulean is wet, the cobalt is more dry, and I'm going to add a few sweeping sort of veins of cobalt. Wet in wet. And I'm I have my brush that's clean and dry. And I'm just going to make sure I get that cobalt just streaked in and then leave it alone because you can definitely overwork the wet and wet if you're not careful. And then I need to do the left side with the same, same brush strokes. So um, go back to my number, my smaller brush so I can control at the center coming out from the center, from that pink, going around the little stamens and getting up nice and close to the pistol there. Oh, I'm just... Now, ideally, as you get more comfortable with painting, you could make the pink and the blue much more wet in wet, but that would require going a lot faster. And I just think that's difficult in a teaching and Zoom situation. So I've switched to my bigger brush. I've got my number six, and now I'm putting the wash, the cerulean blue wash on 
the slightly bigger brush so I can get it on without any brush strokes. Anytime it seems too dark, add water. It will dry lighter. Now this edge here, this is where I wanted a little bit of the green and yellow showing. So I'm gonna pick up a little bit of my lemon and green, wet and wet. And I'm gonna put that on just wet and wet on this, this edge. If you forget, don't worry. It was just a little, um, little trick I wanted to use to make it look less like a photograph and more like a watercolor. Because if you want a photograph of a poppy, then you can take a photograph of a poppy. If you want a watercolor painting, you want a little bit more style to it, a little bit more watercolory look. So having some things that aren't in the photo, but are watercolor tricks are a great way to get that more painterly look. I'm putting a little bit of cobalt in again, just to add some depth and some little streaks, wet and wet. And I'm just looking at the fold behind this poppy here. And it's catching the light and it's quite light. So I'll wash my brush, dry my brush and use it to just pick up a little bit of the cerulean here so that it's much lighter. And of course, everything will dry much lighter. Cerulean is a really easy color to lift. So it's a, a great one to work with. Now I can feel that, that this is completely dry pretty much. I haven't had to use a hairdryer, so I can go on and work on this big petal here. And I want to use my number eight brush. I don't want to be struggling to get paint on. Wet the brush, fill it with the cerulean. And start close in here. Leave a little space for those and come outwards, always outwards. And as I get close to the edge, I just put a little bit of water on my brush to really get a light, delicate edge to the petal. It won't seem as light right now because what you're doing is the darkest color on your paper right now, but it will look different once you get darker colors on your paper. So I put some more water on my brush to spread the cerulean out. Tip of my brush to go around the edges of the petals. And then smaller brush and a little bit of cobalt. Not too much water with the second, second layer of paint. And again, coming out from the center, I want some deeper shadows. I'm going to do two types of shadow. We're going to do this wet in wet, very soft, very soft one. And when this is dry, we're going to do a dry one, which will be much, much harder shadow. So you'll have the two different types of painting on your petal. Let's zoom out a little bit. Now you have to think about what one you're going to work on next, because this big petal here is wet. I've just done that one. So it's not a good idea to go under here and do this one right next to this, this wet, wet petal. What's a better idea is to go way out here and work on this one that's not touching any wet paint over here. So same, same method for each petal. You're going to put the watery cerulean blue on and then a little bit of the cobalt and you're going to try and avoid some of the little stamens 
in the center if you can. But don't worry, we're going to put we're going to put like the darker orangey brown. Um, I can't even think what it's called now. Pollen on those afterwards so they will show up against the blue and of course they will be a complementary color to blue so that's why they look so gorgeous these flowers so same method for each petal yeah just cerulean blue that's not too thick or dark and start at the center coming out with those like strokes like this avoid the little stamens if you can. You can just imagine if all of these were masked with masking fluid, these little stamens, masking fluid is so difficult to get a precise line. They would just look like horrible blobs when you'd finished. You'd finish your gorgeous painting. You'd be so happy with all your petals and your shading and you'd erase your masking fluid and find, oh, look at these great big white blobs I've got on there. That's disappointing. And that's why I don't use masking fluid very often. It's it's so, like the cat size last week, the cat size are a pretty simple shape. So not too hard to use a little bit of masking fluid on, but these tiny little, little um, ends of the stamens are very tricky. Again, a little bit of the cobalt for shading. And if you've got the photo or my my picture close by, like either look at that or look at your screen at what I'm doing, but have something you can check where you're gonna put the darker, darker paint because I'm looking at my photo beside me and the dark paint comes along this edge here, the darker color, the cobalt, and also in here, but we might have to put a lot of that in dry when the other is dry. And the lovely thing is close to the center of the flower on, on the first one we did, it's very, very light. And then close to the center of the flower on this one on the right that I'm working on, it's very, very dark. So we have that lovely contrast too. We will have to put the dark in on this one later. We can't put it all in at once. We could maybe if we were particularly skilled, any of us at flower painting, but I don't profess to be. I don't do flowers very often, so. Um, I'm not going to attempt, and especially the size of your painting too. If I mean, even if this is uh, mine, seven inches by nine inches, which is bigger than we usually work on in class. But even so, uh, you could do a full sheet of these blue poppies. And if you were doing a full sheet, you would have way more room to put your lights and darks and different washes on without losing losing the light areas. Whereas when it's smaller like this, you can use the light, lose the light areas very quickly. Now, right at the edge of this petal here is very light, almost white. So what I'm doing is I'm putting on a little bit of water and just washing that area back a little bit to keep it really, really light. And like I said, with our second layer, we're gonna go quite dark inside here, but we can't go dark yet. It's, it's too, I can put a little bit of cobalt on, but it's too early to go, go dark. We'll do that later. This, this petal here is quite light too. It has dark, very dark sort of shadows on, but we still want to keep it light. Now it is, I would say a little bit more cobalty than the, the other one. So I'm going to mix, I'm going to take my, I have a little bit of cobalt here and I'm going to mix a little bit of cerulean with that cobalt. So I'm going to have a slightly different color and lots of water. We need a lot of water with it. So for this one here, I'm going to have a cerulean and cobalt mix just to have a slightly different blue. But again, 
lots of water, very, very light. And I'm, I should have switched to a number six brush, should have switched to one that's a bit bigger. And then as I come out to the edge of the petal, I'm actually picking up just cerulean. So I've got a change of color. They will change wet in wet. I've got the little A of the ash paper showing through. And of course, when it dries, that will sort of disappear as well, the, the watermark. I got a couple of wet petals here and this one is drying up quite nicely. So I can go over here now, just leave these wet petals to dry a little bit before I finish off here. And now I can come work over here. This one is reflecting white. So I want to leave a part of that petal dry where the white reflection is. I just want the cerulean blue now. So I have to very carefully First of all, paint that that white ref paint around it first. The very first thing I'm going to do before I do anything else. So I don't forget that I wanted to put that there. And then fill in the rest of the petal. Now, this again, this is our first a little, little bit of cobalt there. This is our first layer. So we have a bit more work to do on this one later, but we've got to put that really light, light layer in first. The, the white reflections won't show up very well until on the second layer, we put in a little bit of cobalt shadow, shadow so we can get those to show up. I'm going to now use my cobalt and cerulean mix for this petal behind here so that it's a little bit of a different shade to the one that's going over the top of it. So that the one that's going over the top is going to stand out a little bit more. And my one that's going over the top is dry. So I got a little bit more water on my brush as I'm coming out to the edge. And I mustn't forget to go around the stem here. because we're going to do the stem later in green and, and it will be difficult to get a nice transparent green if we have blue on there. We won't be able to get rid of the blue if we paint over the stem. It will always show. The center, the center of this one is quite green. So I'm going to mix my yellow and my green together. And I'm going to start in the center of this one with some yellowy green. It, it, and even if it's not really, really green in the photograph, there's no reason you can't emphasize that greenness with by making it a, a little bit more green in your painting. The lovely thing about painting, you can do things like that, emphasize colors that are very subtle and just emphasize them a little bit, pick them up another level. So I want my, I have my cerulean blue and cobalt mix and I want them to mix wet in wet with that green where it meets
Now I'll go back to just my cerulean blue and pull that down the, the petal. kind of see a little bit of that other petal behind there. Now, I loved doing the wet and wet cats, but I find this much more relaxing because it's not so stressful trying to trying to keep up with the wet and wet. You can work at your own pace. So while I have a little bit of that um, blue on my palette, and um, because this green is fairly dry, I can also put some in here before I totally forget this little bit of petal showing through this bud. And I'm going to have that quite, um, quite nice and dark because, of course, the petals haven't unfolded yet, so they are much more concentrated in color. On the photograph, there was a very out of focus leaf or something right there where I've put the bud. And when I did my painting or what did the first drawing, I really felt that we needed something pointing down towards these three flowers, like the, the stem that's in the, in the photograph, you know, cut right through the painting, but of course it didn't cut right in half because the petals in front of it, but, Nevertheless, it's coming into the painting and going out of the painting. And that's okay in a photograph because it's kind of blurry and these leaves are blurry and the background is very dark in the photograph. But I didn't want to do a background on the painting and to have something that go, takes your eyes straight out of the painting like that is, is not a good idea. I wanted something that came back into the painting and pointed down towards the flowers. So I found a picture of a, a bud on, on another photograph and added that as a device to keep the eyes circulating around the painting. And to use, I just felt I needed to use that stem. It seemed to work well in the um, painting and I've missed a stem out in my, there's another stem here I've missed out in my drawing. But, um, just sort of explaining why that's there. It was intentional. I just realized I missed out a stem. So right here is another one. The thing is the flowers without stems don't look real. They've got nothing to ground them. Two stems, just one here and one here would look odd. You've got just an even number of stems. Having this third one is beautiful, but it needs the bud to come back into the painting. So let's get a bit closer. Um, I'm gonna work on these last ones up here now, the petals. And the good thing is that they're, it's fairly direct. You're just going to put some lovely cerulean blue on there. And sweeping sweeping outwards in the direction of the, the petal. And a little bit of cobalt. And put in a little bit of wet in wet shading. actually 
just trying to sort out the petals on here. It's actually quite a bit of dark right here. Well, there we go. First layer done. I will pause mine. So now it's dry. I can work even more slowly and more carefully on the next stage, which is putting in the shadows. And I'm going to I'm going to sort of go in the same order. I started here, and the shadows here are, are fairly dark. Bring mine over here. So they're very sort of dark coming up here, and there's a shadow where the, the petal kind of folds here. So we're going to use the cobalt and the ultramarine to put some of those shadows in, but be very careful not to go over a lot of your very light cerulean so that you've got the light as well as the dark. We're working on dry paper with not very wet paint, and to blend your colors so they're not too harsh, you're, you're going to use a little bit of water like a wet brush. And the darkest part of the petal is the center. So always start, always start. I've got ultramarine blue on my brush right now. And I'm gonna start with the point of my brush coming out from the center of the petal First of all, with those little streaks that you see. And then I'm going to wet my brush, get a little bit more ultramarine blue on there and quite a bit of water and make the, the shadow with, oh, I'm going to get my Kleenex here. I don't always like control your brush with a, a cloth or a Kleenex. So as I get out to the edge, I want to soften that with a, a slightly wet brush so that I don't, I don't want to lose those light, light edges to the petal. I can also add a little bit of rose to that sometimes to get that like pinky color. Just here, I've added a little bit of rose to that ultramarine to just change the color up on this side, get sort of a pinky violet back to just the ultramarine now with a lot of water and I want to get that there's a fold in the petal kind of comes like this and put that in and come back to my my center here and just let it meet what I've done I'm going to let that fold soak in just a little bit and then take a clean, damp brush and just soften that edge. And I'm going to get some cobalt and there are little streaks, little streaks in the petal, little lines. I've got the very tip of my brush going absolutely in the direction of those little lines in the petal. Wet my brush, soften some of those lines with a wet brush. This is such, such control painting. I'm gonna to go to my number two brush, the cobalt blue, and just bring a few of those, few of those little lines up and around this petal. The one in front of this is darker, but I don't want to put that on until this, this one is dry. And I will even have, have one more darker layer after this one starts to dry. Now, these two are too close to that wet paint, but this one, is, it's quite dark in here. I'm going to go back to um, number six brush and the ultramarine. And I want to 
again in the direction of the, the sort of veins or folds in the, in the poppy. And I come back, wet brush, smooth it in with a wet brush. more color sometimes you can leave a hard line and sometimes smooth it in that way you'll have that lovely hard and soft look I'm going my smaller brush again now it's very light in the center of this one very light, but I'm going to put a couple of dark shadows in there just so that the light even shows up more. I'm going to mix a little bit of the rose with the ultramarine, just a little bit. I want it just a slightly more violety color, the ultramarine. I'm right next to this light edge. I'm going to put that violety mix in. That's the ultramarine and the rose. There's another, another quite dark shadow here. Same thing, the ultramarine, the rose, just a wet and wet shadow there. And I'm very careful not to get all of the lights darkened. We don't want to lose, don't want to lose the lovely, lovely lights. Now we've got this, this big petal here and it's quite dark next to the center of this one. And to make this stamen, um, pistol really stand out, you need to be dark right next to it. That's where I'm going to start. But I have to be very careful not to do this. I don't want to go round like this and leave a round edge. Instead, I'm going round very slowly and leaving an edge that is feathered like this, always feathering it out so that I don't have a rounded brush stroke around there. Again, I'm going to add a little bit of that violet that I mixed as well. Feather out these, these brush strokes. As I come into the center, I want to show a lot of the light coming through. And then as I come out towards the edge of the petal, I'm going to use my wet brush to soften some of those lines. So we've got some hard and some soft. I'm going to mix the cerulean blue and the cobalt as I still want to have some cerulean blue in my shadows as well. I've got a cerulean blue cobalt mix. I'm going to put some of that on as well. Wet it in with a wet brush. I've got the cerulean and cobalt mix again this side. Bring it down. Blend it in with a wet brush. At this point I'm I'm gonna work back and forth. I have some ultramarine on my brush again. I've got this wet area I've just put in. And I can put a little bit more ultramarine coming down into that.
a lot of this I've dampened so I can still work into it with some very fine lines. It's damp. It won't be too strong. And I'm going stronger under this light petal. I'm going to go stronger with my shadows so that this light edge shows up well. And very close to the center on this one is quite a dark green. So I want to mix my sap green or whatever green you've mixed with some ultramarine blue. I'll bring it over here. So my sap green looks like this. Then I'll mix some ultramarine blue in with that to darken it up a little bit. It's pretty dark now. I might have to go add a bit more sap green to it. There we go. Gorgeous, gorgeous color. Oh my goodness. Tiny brush, back to my number two. And I want to have some, don't put your hand in your painting, Caroline. I've got a Kleenex to lean on. I want to get some dark, dark green in there. I've got to add a little bit of yellow to that. It's just a tad dark, too dark. And in here, just right in here, I want to add a little bit of dark green. Don't lose the, don't lose the pink. Don't lose the little stamens. Use a very small brush. I want to have a little bit of green on that pistol there too. And while I have that dark green, I can use a little bit of it up here. You know, when I'm waiting for stuff to dry, and put a shadow on that side of the bud. Put a shadow on this side of the, the bud. Shadow on, wet brush, blend it in. Wet this side a little bit. Get my darker green, a little bit of modeling on this bud here with my dark green while well, I have it here on my brush. Of course, we've got lots to do on the stems yet with that dark green. Another place that has quite a bit of dark green at the center is this one here. So again, I've got my little brush, I've got my dark green. So I can start putting a little bit of that that dark green here too. It's the darks that make your light colors look really bright and glowing. So in some of these areas like the center of the flower and behind these stamens, you have to go pretty dark so that everything else looks really, really light. The end of this little pistol here has a little bit of green shadow on too. I mean a little bit, very, very tiny. Every little, every little bit is important. Just looking at um, I've got my ultramarine. And while I have that green there, I'm going to also connect it to the ultramarine shadows. Behind there, water. Bigger brush. So I start off dry, little brush, then water, then bigger brush. Needs to be a shadow behind this here, so it shows up. 
bring out your lines for your folds, then wet brush and start to pull this out so that it comes out to a very light edge to the petal. And smaller brush again, back and forth. And I can add, I've put a little bit of wet on there. So I can add a few more lines into the wet so they're not quite so harsh. The key is not to put your water um, on the paint in here, this dark paint. Don't put your water there. Put your water on the part of the petal that's light and just let this paint, this dark paint from here, flow into your water. The other place that has quite a dark line is quite a dark shadow is right here. And pretty dark. Again, wet brush to just blend that in. And switch to the number six. Of course, your ultramarine has to be mixed with quite a bit of water to make it not too thick and too dark. You don't want it really, really, really dark. It should be a, you know, a transparent mix. And there's a definite mix a little, again, a little bit of rose and ultramarine. So I got a slightly different, different blue, more violety blue. Just here. Coming out. And some streaks. And back to my cerulean, I've got my cerulean on my brush. I'm just gonna use my cerulean, -y, wet cerulean paint to just put a bit of cerulean shadow on that edge, just here. A little brush again. I'm coming up here. Little sort of veins here. This little bit here. You can see it's a it's quite a slow process of building up the veins, the shadows, and always working like so you're not working a wet petal against a wet petal. That's why I kind of move around the painting a little bit. And sometimes the ones behind do not need to be as detailed as the ones in front. For instance, I'm going to put some shadow on this one and I want it to be very, very um, just wet in wet. No sort of many lines showing there's a, a shadow coming here. So I'm going to put the shadow on. I got a little bit of the cerulean on my brush too, because I want it to be a darker cerulean here. And just put a sort of a wet in wet shadow, not, not too much detail on this one. It's underneath the other petal and we don't need attention drawn to this one. Same with this one here. I'm going to use my rosy sort of um, rose and ultramarine violety mix. And just do this one more sort of plain. 
the cerulean. And not too much detail on that one. So I had the sort of violet mix on one side of the shadow, the cerulean on the other. And I'm gonna put this on this side too. This is not really touching the wet, so I can put some extra shading on this side remember i said where we've got that really white shadow it'll show up more if we have some this darker color close to it just in here can pause for a minute while you work um especially up here i know when this was dry on this one i added a little bit more in the way of shadow and you can add a little bit more color if you feel that there's some place that you want a little bit more color you can add a little bit more for instance i could get a little bit of rose and if i felt i wanted a little bit more rose in here I can pop that in with a little bit of water and just give a little bit more rosy color there to, to give just give more color because you can sort of see a little bit more color on the on the um, photograph. We can, I think it's a good time to work on the stems because most of my petals now are damp. Um, how's this one? See, I could, it's still a little bit damp, but I could put, I could put a little bit more blue on there just to deepen that color. It's, it's not, not too, too wet there, but it's a good time to work on the stems while that's all sort of just drying up. Let's just zoom out a little bit. And I see you're both, you're both painting away, but um, I don't want to rush you. I like to, when I do a round stem, I like to put yellow on first so that I have yellow on the highlights and then I can add green wet in wet to the stem. I have my, just my Azo yellow or lemon, you can use either one, it doesn't matter. I just like to have a yellow first. And I put that on the stem. The, the light side of the stem is going to be the right, right hand side. And we're gonna work on one stem at a time because if you put all the yellow on it, it will be dry before you get a chance to go do some wet in wet green. Now I have that, I had mixed up that dark green, remember? So I have over this side, I have the dark, dark green with the ultramarine blue. And I added a bit of yellow to this side of the green. So let's wet it all up again, get it ready to use. So I've got a nice dark green and a yellowy green. And I started at the top with the yellow. So on the left side now, I'm going to put the darker green in. It will blend with the yellow and give a sort of a 3D effect. I'm going even darker. I'm dipping into the, the more ultramarine bluey side. I'm just painting it in a line very, very carefully along the left-hand side. It will blend itself into the yellow all by itself. And same here. 
and my yellow is already starting to dry. So that's why I can't do all three stems at once because the yellow would be perfectly dry and then you'd get no blending happening. Under this, under this petal, of course, it's going to be darker so I can fill in a bit more dark under there. Let's zoom in. You can see a bit better. And then come down this side. And dark behind that nice light petal. And my yellow is getting very dry towards the bottom. So I'm going to have to use a wet brush to blend that in because the yellow's dried. Or I can use some more yellow to blend that in. A little bit tricky, but it's worked. That way I've got some nice three-dimensional color on the stem. I'm going to do each one in turn. Oh, yellow on this one first. This one's shorter, so it's going to be a lot easier to work on wet and wet. <clears throat> Dark green. Always going to be darkest at the top underneath the petals. And having the dark green against the light petals will make them show up more. And there's one more. Now the stems of this poppy have little tiny bristles on. So they're gonna get put on too. Just have to give this a moment to dry before we do that. I'll put that dark green on. There's not, there's not a lot of water mixed in with the dark green so that it doesn't flood. If you, if you have a lot of water mixed in with your dark green and your yellow's wet, it will flood and you won't have that three-dimensional effect. It will just all go dark green. So it's a question of how much water you mix with your paint to control that. And if it's too light, you can always add a little bit more dark, <clears throat> dark green or you can put a second layer on later when you um when that's dry and also this this little bud up here that can have a little bit more a little bit more definition to the dark side there i'm just going to put a little bit more shadow on that um and the the flowers should be the petals should be dry enough that we can start to do a little bit of work on the stamens. Now they are a variety of sort of reddish browns and orange colors. So we need to have those colors mixed up. I'll just clean a couple of places to do that. So burnt sienna is a lovely orangey brown. So that's going to be great as a base color these I got my burnt sienna and I'm using my small brush to mix which is a no-no put that down and grab my bigger brush and my number eight so here's my lovely reddish brown burnt sienna I'm going to mix a little bit of yellow I've got azo yellow you can mix cadmium yellow with that so I've also got a very I'm going to have my like burnt sienna this side yellowy burnt sienna this side I'm going to mix that burnt sienna with some red. I like my, I still like my cadmium red. Pyrrole red's good, Windsor red's good. I'm going to mix a bit, a bit of red with that to make a more orangey color. Even maybe add a little bit of yellow to that too, to make it even more red and yellow and burnt sienna to make it even more orangey. And that should give us some good colors for the, the pollen that's on the end of the stamens. So I'm going to start with my yellowy burnt sienna and start putting in some of those. Oh, this is still wet. You know what I got to do? I got to use my hairdryer. I can see them bleeding into the blue a little bit. So I'm going to get my hairdryer and 
dry that. I'll mute it for you so you don't have to listen to it. Perfectly dried these centers now so they are dry. I've got a number two brush. You could do a number two, number one brush. Just needs to be a very small brush. And I'm going to start with the yellowy burnt sienna and start dotting that on. Now the tops of these stamens are sort of an oval shape and they are going in different directions. And sometimes there's two or three that you can barely, you know, differentiate uh, which is which. And sometimes they are individual. So that's how you're going to paint them. You're going to paint them in clusters and sometimes individual. I'm going into the ready color now and putting in a few more. Now this is going to be, you know, time consuming. It was time consuming for me to draw them all three times and for the uh, drawing that I shared with you. But it's worth it, I think, to get them looking just, just right back into my just burnt sienna. There is quite a big, this is just, just burnt sienna. There's quite a big cluster uh, right next to this pistol here. So I'm going to put that big cluster in right here. And having that dark next to the light will help show up the, the light color. Also, remember I had a little shadow on the end here and I'm using the orangey color, the red and yellow and burnt sienna, just to add, and there's a one over the top, just to add a little tiny shadow just on that side. Just, it's a little tiny touch. I'm going back and forth between the different mixes I made for the ends of these. Some are going to be very small and some are going to be bigger. So vary the size of them. Some can be dots and some you can really show that oval, oval shape. And of course, some are far out and some are close to the center. Switch to my more burnt sienna mix. And normally, of course, these colors wouldn't show up over a blue, but we've tried to leave it pretty light and I've tried to leave some little spaces so we can get this to sort of show up. And I've got another little trick to show you in a minute that will, will help, I think, as well. Some of these cover the, the pistol here. Move to the other one. These are so these are so important too because we have almost all blue in this painting. Adding a little bit more red and and yellow to the mix to make a more much more orangey color. And orange is the complement of blue. So to have this little bit of complementary color in here is really really important. And again, the end of this can add a little bit of orangey shadow, a little bit to the side. And also, like sometimes some of the stems are white, but we can put a few in with white paint afterwards, but also you can just drag the tip of a very small brush and put some of those stems in, in the orangey color. They don't show us that color in the photograph, but we can add a little bit of color just because, and we can add a little bit of white paint too. Oh, that's two of them down. Another place that I like to add a little bit of that color, just because again, is on top of this here. 
because it's a complementary color and I just want to use it somewhere else. So I put a little bit of that orangey color on a wet brush, just mush it in to the shadow side of this, this little um, bud, even here, a little bit on the shadow side of the stem, which is now dry. Just because we're, we're just playing with color now rather than following the, the um, reference photo religiously. Again, here and here and here. This is not in the reference photo. This is me using complementary colors to make it more of a watercolor and less of a a photo. I just wet that, added a little bit in there and here too. And we got one more, one more left to get the little stamen ends on. And I, I'm not, I'm being kind of quick, I know, because we've got a two hour lesson and I want to get to the final stages before we run out of time. But this is something you can really take your time on. You can come back to later and, and put a few more in if you want to. And of course, if you're working from the video, then you can just pause this and go at your own pace. add a little bit more red into my mix just to make it a bit bit brighter you may not notice it brighter on the camera because it, it dulls down the, the colors a little bit but in real life it does pick it up I'm going to zoom out again So one last thing to do on the stems is to put the little whiskers in. I want my, want my little rigger, my little liner, my little tiny script liner brush for that. And of course I always wet it first to get it so it's got a lovely point. And these stems on the poppies, they have these little tiny hairs. Some stick out a long way and some, of course, are a different angle and they don't stick out as much, but they're kind of fun to put on. And in the photograph, the way that the light is, they are white against a very dark background. And we're not going to put a dark background on this, so we can't do white against dark. We have to reverse it and do dark against light. There's a few on the bud. And these are little things sometimes you if you're looking at the painting or the photograph, you don't note you don't notice them until you sort of look really deeply. But on some kind of a level, you do notice them. It does do something to make the painting realistic, more realistic, attractive more like a poppy and you may not realize they're there or, or that they're doing that for you but they do they have they have an effect I have this little brush in my hand and I can do a little bit of texture on the stem with the brush while I've got it the stems now dry some of those little little fuzzy things curl put a little bit of texture on the stem here a bit more shadow. Yeah, I got one more with some little fuzzies. Oh, I'm going to get it in camera. Now, there's no reason that you couldn't do a dark background on this, but it's an incredibly dangerous thing to do once you've got, if you've got a gorgeous painting of a poppy. 
you could really ruin it, ruin it by putting in a, a very dark background. So I did not want to risk that. If you wanted to risk it, you, you could try. But there's a real danger that you could go over the edges of your lovely petals, that you could get bleeds into areas that you don't want bleeds, that you could get uh, not a very good wet and wet look to the background. So I advise against it. And um, let's just keep it all beautiful and fresh looking. But if you, if you, you know, if you do two of them and, and you want to try it, want to try putting a dark background, you could. There's no reason why you couldn't. I just don't want to risk it. I was happy with this and I'm not going to risk it putting in any dark. And now that this petal's dry, I am going to put in just a few more, a few more dark, dark lines. and shadows. And even with my liner brush, because the liner brush, of course, is lovely and thin. It's a great one if you want to add, in fact, it's so thin, you can barely see it. Great one if you want to add a few more lines to any of these petals. Especially this big petal here, which has got lots of space for doing detail. And this is often something I will do after leaving the painting for a day or so to dry so I can really see the colors as they are when they're dry. And I'll come back to it in about a day and I'll think, well, is there anywhere I need to add a little bit more a little bit more definition, a little bit more color. Definitely in here, down deep in here, I need to get a bit more color down in this area. It needs to be a lot darker. And this petal too. I'm just gonna wet that little bit in. And this petal needs a bit more, a bit more color. Bit more definition, bit more here. I've got that sort of purpley color with the rose and the ultramarine. And I could have a little bit more, of course purple and yellow are complements. So to have a little bit of that purpley color next to that yellow is going to make it stand out. And it's a great, great color for shadows on blue. A bit more shadow here. And a little bit more here. These transparent layers of shadow are what watercolor is all about. putting them in a little bit at a time. Layers like tissue paper over tissue paper. And they can't all be, they can't all be put in in one big layer at the beginning. They have to be put in slowly, layer after layer on dry paint for the best effect. Oh. I even feel like I have that purpley color on my brush and I want to even put a little bit on here just to add it somewhere else. I'm going to, again, make sure it's thoroughly dry before I do a little bit of maybe white paint or a little bit of pastel pencil. I'm going to stop it being noisy. So I have these pastel pencils that come in a variety of lovely colors, any color you want. 
and they are great for going over watercolor when you need to put light color over dark. So if you have some places where you need to put in, you know, the, the colors of the stamens, but you've got your blue too dark where it's not showing up, these pastel pencils are lovely for that. I'm putting a little bit of yellow on there. They make it so easy too. If you're not good with a small paintbrush, you can use these lovely pastel pencils to add some detail. They come in white as well. So you can, you know, put a little bit more white in if you've lost the white. Push this up a little bit. I want to put some extra ones on, some yellow ones, some yellow highlights. Even if I want to put a bit of yellow highlight on the pistols here. The yellow highlight on here, rub it in. Oh, such a, such a nice little tool. And of course, the other thing that I love to use is the, the um, Dr. PH Martin's white, because it's such a lovely, strong white. I need a very, very clean brush, so I don't want to don't want to contaminate, ever contaminate the white in my pot. So have a little dish and I get a little bit of white out of my pot and mix it with some water, very clean water in my dish so that I can paint with very clean white paint. I make sure that my brushes are super, super clean, clean water. Really clean brush and my liner brush. And then I water over everything. So with that white paint and that liner brush, if I wanted to put some of those white um, stamens in that show up white in the photograph or white lines that show up in the flower that I couldn't, that I had too much difficulty to leave those white lines when I'm painting, I can use a very thin liner brush and the PH Martins white, and just add those. There's some lovely white lines that, that curve around here. And if you've lost a little bit of light anywhere on the petals, you can add a little bit of light there. There's a little bit of light here. Just gives, gives some little touches to the finished, finished painting. A few white lines here. A little bit of a, a reflection here. Even if you wanted some of those little bristles to be white, actually that's a little bit thick. Of course they won't show up against the white paper, but you could have a few actually on the darker part of the stem. And don't overdo, like don't overdo the white, but it is a lovely, extra little handy thing to have when you're completely finished to add in any places that you really need a little bit of white. And of course that's incredibly hard to leave in watercolor. It just, just gives a few touches you know, I did manage to leave that little bit of highlight on this petal, but I, I maybe just add a few highlights to the, the shape of it. And I don't see many other areas that there's a lot of white, just a few touches here and there. And we're pretty much done that one. I think with less stress than the wet in wet cats, now I'm going to take my masking tape off. Hold your corners when you do that. I managed to get a lovely smudge of paint on that corner. 
place so get my little little marks on there where I put my tape to get it uh, the accurate width just little helpers and then I got a little bit of paint here I have a I have an eraser that is so this this is like a little it's called a sand eraser it's quite like sandpaper but in an eraser and sometimes if you've got good quality paper you can use that or you can use those you know those white magic erasers you get for the kitchen you can use those to just sand a little bit of your paper or your paint or something off of there and it's gentle it doesn't it doesn't damage your paper too much as long as it's the very last thing you do like if you painted over that sanding it would probably be distressed but if it's the last thing you do to get a little mark off it's called a sand eraser i just it's, i got it at the art store i think me for tombow um to erase ink blotches but it's just as good with uh, paint blotches because what it does is it just takes the surface off the paper without damaging too much leaves it nice and smooth uh, that's good enough good enough let's compare it to the other one i think it came out fairly similar thank you for joining me again i hope your poppy looked beautiful and that you're pleased with it it's almost Christmas time, so pretty soon we're going to be painting Christmas cards. I'll see you all next week. Bye for now.